Hey, good morning, everybody. Chief Meteorologist Brad Penovich here with our update on Isaias, our newest tropical storm, which, by the way, is the earliest I name storm on record. The previous record was August 7th, 2005. Still a lot of uncertainty. I'm getting a load of questions about plans and stuff. I'm trying to try to get into all that, but there are, is still some uncertainty. And we're, we even though we have a circulation now and a defined storm, there's still a time we need to wait for this to reform over Hispaniola, and I'm going to explain why. Here's the system right now, and you can see the low-level center is actually down in here. That's where the hurricane hunters were just in there. They found the low-level center, but there are hints of a mid-level circulation up here. And why is that important? I'm going to pause it right here. Is because huge mountains over Hispaniola, the low-level center is going to get shredded, and what's likely going to happen, and we're starting to see this reflected in some of the model guidance, is a new <laughs> circulation of some kind forming north of the island that would be a pretty significant jump of the low level center and in the long range that could have a pretty significant impact on the track you can see there are a lot of clouds on the north side of this in fact the strongest winds with isaias are up in here not really near the center so it's very lopsided um, and as it gets closer to hispaniola and the mountains start to block some of the southerly inflow it's going to struggle regardless until it gets past Hispaniola because even if the center does reform over water, remember, the counterclockwise spin, airflow is going to get blocked by the mountain. So the moisture is going to hit the mountains downslope into this side and it's going to cause sinking air, which would not promote development. So you're not going to see this system really crank up until it probably gets to the Bahamas. And speaking of that, will it crank up i mean that's the like million dollar question because the water here is extremely warm i mean that's the thing i could tell you it gets up to the bahamas here folks we're talking about very warm water this is tropical heat a uh, tropical cyclone heat potential so if it hovers into the bahamas and stays just off the east coast it has some really ripe water here in the gulf stream so it there's a good chance that this could become a hurricane under the right circumstances in fact right now the forecast is for a strong tropical storm. So here's the spaghetti plot. The thing you notice, significant shift um, in the last 24 hours from a spread over Florida to now the majority off the east coast of Florida and even threatening the Outer Banks and eastern North Carolina. But here's the thing, what kind of shape is that going to be in when it gets up there? Let me zoom in a little bit carefully because uh, the clusters are close to North Carolina, but they're trending even offshore of North Carolina. Um, and why is that important? I'm actually going to throw up the tropical storm here uh, data. And I've got all the models on here. Here's the actual forecast track from the Hurricane Center. Let me turn the models off and focus on the forecast. So if you look at the forecast track from the Hurricane Center, you see where they have the center right there. Notice all the strong winds are north and east of the center. So it moves over the Turks and Caicos, heads into the Bahamas, and then starts to make this turn to the right. Now again, even though I have the center line turn on here, this is the cone. So it could be anywhere in there. And I would start leaning towards this side of the cone, especially uh, as we get closer to the southeast, because a big trough of low pressure is going to be digging in across the middle of the country. And that's going to help start steering it north and east as the ridge starts to weaken. Now, this trough is also so strong, it's going to start applying southwesterly shear. So that's why you're not seeing the storm at least in some of the guidance, get very strong. But there's a very fine line here because the Gulf Stream runs roughly right in here. And if the storm should hug the Gulf Stream and be you know, parallel to the coast, the southwesterly shear could actually help vent the storm to the northeast. So there would be a window in here over the warm water and where the, the southwest flow could actually help vent the storm a little bit. Um, with its movement in that direction that it could get some strength and maybe perk up to a hurricane. So hurricane strength is, is certainly still in the cards and I think that's a possibility. Now the 11 a.m. advisory is not out yet. Here's a sneak peek. Um, I'll zoom in cut close here. So here was the last position. This T right here is what we call the consensus guidance. It was a little farther to the east than the actual circulation but the low level circulation has been found in here uh, by the hurricane hunters. 1,004, 1,005 millibars but I think the new center is going to form up in here. We'll go long range. Here's the track. They essentially are going to stick close to the consensus track. But then look what happens near the, the Carolinas. We start to see this shift east. So the track starts to go offshore more. Here was the previous track right here. 
So there's a pretty strong indication we might see a further east shift with this. And notice it stays a T. T means it's a tropical storm. D is a tropical depression all the way up into the northeast. So that is something to keep an eye on to see how this shift off to the east is. But I'll be honest with you, until this thing gets past Hispaniola here, um, which let me play this, and the center reforms, it's just like the center forming in the first place. This doesn't give us a lot of information until we see what happens with the circulation center here um, as it moves to the north and east. So long range, here's what, here's what I think is going to happen. Um, here's the European model. Here's our ridge. This has been the driving force. It extends all the way into the Gulf of Mexico right now. A weakness is developing there and a trough is moving in from the north. So watch what happens through time here. We'll go through time. You see the storm is right there, northern tip of Hispaniola um, tomorrow morning, or, or tonight, excuse me, into tomorrow morning. It starts moving towards the southern Bahamas right there. Look at the trough building. Now, the reason it's blue, this is a very anomalous, basically abnormal trough for this time of year. This is a pretty big trough for the summertime. We don't normally see troughs like this. And good news for us, this will actually break our heat wave as well. Um, so it starts diving to the south. And you can see it building over the middle of the country. And the ridge, which is over here, becomes less of the driving force. And this trough starts becoming more of the driving force because it does a couple of things. It's supplying southwesterly steering currents, but it's also hammering and weakening the, the, the western side of this ridge. So there's still a lot of players in here, uh, the trough over the U.S. and here. But the signs are pretty clear that this thing is probably going to take a pretty sharp turn north and northeast eventually. The question is how sharp that is. And oftentimes that has to do with not just the steering currents, but the intensity of storm. Weak storm um, might turn more or drift more, be more erratic, a more organized system um, that's stacked up can actually be steered by all levels of the atmosphere. If it's more of a low level circulation, that gets steered by the low level flow. If it builds up into the mid and upper levels, then the mid and upper level flow starts affecting it more. And really when we're looking at steering currents, we typically look at the mid level flow. And if the storm doesn't get deep or tropically or, or vertically stacked in the tropics, uh, the mid level flow may not have as much influence um, as the low level flow, which is typically driven more by the trade wind. So you could see what's going on here right now. And the circulation's here, but we're seeing a big explosion of thunderstorms up in here which is likely going to become our new system. So again, this was the 5 a.m. advisory. I would tell you right now, we're going to see a shift out here. And by the way, this is Monday night and Tuesday. Um, a lot of folks asking me about, well, that looks a little quicker. It could slow down here. Remember, when it gets stuck between these two steering currents, the, the, the low here, which is the trough, and the high pressure, it could slow down and weaken or slow down and say install or maybe even meander for a little bit before it kicks kick northeast so the timing is still up in the air and the other thing i wanted to tell everybody everybody on the coast and everybody in the carolinas down to florida I'm getting a lot of questions should i cancel my plans should i change my vacation plans right now no and here's why because it's still so far out if the storm continues to trend east and you're on the west side that's the good side of the storm. There may be little to no impacts. It could just be a tropical storm. And I hate saying that, but tropical storm versus hurricane is a big difference, um, especially wind and surge. And if it's offshore, that's a big difference, whether it's onshore. So if you have vacation plans, don't change them now. Just watch and monitor the situation. The other reason I say this is if you have, if you've rented a house or you're staying in a hotel or you've got a, a deposit on anything, you're not going to get your money back if you cancel right now. You can get your money back if a tropical storm watch or warning or above is issued. So it's always better to wait, but it's a good idea to have a plan and a backup plan and keep an eye on it. So basically right now on the east, southeast coast, everybody is in watch and wait mode. You need to pay attention to the weather daily, multiple times to see updated tracks. Remember 5 a.m., 11 a.m., 5 p.m., 11 p.m four updates a day we're getting on the track and issuance of new warnings and watches so that's what the mode we're in right now we're not in canceling plan mode at all because it still hasn't moved over hispaniola and until it does so that could change everything so i don't want you to cancel plans and then it not be a big deal so we've got time there's no rush on this one right now because it's still several days out but it is a good time we're in the heart of hurricane season have a hurricane plan ready and especially with COVID, it's going to take you longer 
time to do things and you're going to need more things to think about. So start planning now because if it's not for Isaias, it could be for another storm down the road.